Hello everyone and welcome back to The Little Quilter. Today we are going to be working on finishing up the quilt top of the kite in a square block. As you can see behind me, I have finished all of the rows and I'm ready to piece all of those together. And then during this video, the other thing we're going to be doing is putting on the border of this quilt. And I'm excited to do that because that means the quilt top will be done. And then we can take a picture and start working on how I'm going to design this uh, quilting pattern for this. I think we really have two main options just to jump ahead a little bit. So if you can see here, I think you have this sort of octagon uh, block here with the star in the center, or you can focus on these white portions making this, um, this star here and the colored pieces being sort of that outward piece of the star. So not quite sure which way I'm going to go. I'm going to do a lot of designs, I think, before I finally choose the right one. But before I can do that, I've got to finish piecing the top. So let's do this. So I think that my little one has finally gone down for a nap. And what I have decided to do is to go through and pin each of these. So there are a lot of seams in this one. So not only do I have the center seams of the actual blocks um, for the large squares and then connecting them, but you also have these seams right here connecting each of the kites together. And so there's just so many, and to keep that really nice geometric pattern, I think it's gonna be best if I go through and pin them rather than trying to hold them together. It's what I did while I was piecing them together, and although it didn't take as long when I was doing smaller blocks, I think that it will work out better to do it this way. Um, when I don't have to pin, I usually do not use pins. But I do find that in general, my accuracy improves with it. And especially whenever I was a beginner, pinning was something that I really hated to do. I didn't like pinning, um, but I've become more and more accustomed to doing it um, be because everything just looks nicer with it, you know? And if you're gonna spend this much time on something, why not spend a little extra and get it as perfect as you can? Now, you all know I'm not one for perfection and um, certainly, as I was piecing this block together, I feel like you can even see over here, if you really go back and look at other videos, um, you could see that that probably isn't exactly right. So I messed up whenever I went to chain sew some blocks together. And after I messed up, I didn't go back and unstitch them. I just left it as is and adjusted a few of the other blocks that I hadn't done so that it looked okay and went with it. I, you know, I don't think that quilting is supposed to be about perfection. You know, I think that it's supposed to be about something handmade, something made with love. And that's what I'm doing. Now, I have no idea who is going to end up with this quilt. I really didn't have a, you know, sometimes you make quilts and you have a person in mind and you're like, this quilt is going to be for, you know, your mom or your brother or your, or your dad or who, friend, family friend or a baby. Um, but this one, I don't really have a plan for it. I just really liked the pattern and I really liked the fabric. And also I really wanted to make a gradient quilt, which I think it's turning out pretty well. I know that it is not perfect, but I'm happy with it. So I'm going to keep pinning and then we're going to keep going on with, uh, we're going to get to the sewing machine and we're going to sew it. So. Okay. I've got six strips pinned together. I've got my espresso in my great-grandmother's coffee mug. Um, just as a side note, my great-grandmother was the one that um, was the quilter in our family. And so I like to have 
either there's a ring that I wear that um, she gave me, but or having like a coffee like this near me um, that was hers. It just makes me feel closer to her because quilting was something that she did and I can remember um, going to her house as a little kid and her sewing machine and fabric and everything and actually made my first quilt. It was extremely small. It was just like a, a nine patch block and it was only three by three blocks uh, of those nine patch blocks. And so it was a very small quilt and she helped us pick out the fabric, piece it. My sister was, was helping me as well. Um, and then I was the one that actually stitched it. Now my great grandmother did hand stitching. So yeah, I attempted to do hand stitching. I actually have her loom. I have the loom somewhere that she gave me for it. And so I have it around here. That's what I used. And I completed that over quite a bit of time and realized I would never hand stitch a quilt again. Um, great kudos to that generation and the people that do it now, but I am much more of a machine quilter and have much more patience for that. So, um, but story aside, I am going to uh, jump in to getting these so we can get this quilt top pieced and uh, Let's do it. Okay, so I have gone through, sewed them together, and then I have ironed the backs. There was definitely moments of not wanting to even iron them and just thinking as I flatten them out on the quilting loom, it'll be fine, but I stuck to it and I ironed them together. And now so I'm gonna lay these out and then I will continue piecing this until it's finished. I really don't know how I do this. I really look at things. I pin them together for accuracy and then I've just completely messed it up. It's so frustrating because I've gone through, I've ironed this and I'm gonna have to totally undo it. Um, let me show you what I've done. All right, so here it is. I was laying it out and I was like, oh good, first row, beautiful. Got this row, beautiful. This row, what is happening here? What is happening? It's like, there's, the yellows should be here. These yellows are here. And I was like, that doesn't seem right. And then as we go, why are there more pinks here? There should be more purples. And then we just, keep, and it just is like, that's not right at all. And what I've done is I've sewn them opposite of what they should have been. So when I folded them over, I pinned the wrong side. So I've got to go back through and rip out all of this. I'm just so sad about it. Especially when you just don't have a ton of quilting time. You know, if I had all day to do this, it wouldn't be that big of a deal. It would be annoying, but it wouldn't be that big of a deal. But I'm on a time clock until that little kiddo in there wakes up. So it's a bit frustrating because I'm so close to finishing this quilt top and this just put me behind. So, okay, going to fix this now. Okay, everybody, now that I have the quilt top finally pieced, I'm going to work on the borders. And so I have cut some five and a half inch strip white fabric, um, the same white fabric as I've done on the top. And then I went through and I decided to make 
two color choices that I used for my cornerstones of the border are this one and this one. So the top left and the bottom right are going to be the orange fabric and then the alternate ones are going to be this and that kind of goes in line with either end having that sort of orange color up here and down here and the blue stripe kind of running through. So what I'm going to do is orient that appropriately because we obviously I would like them to sort of be sitting out like this. So I've got to orient my borders. The plan is to do that and do it well, and then we'll be able to attach the borders, which always goes a lot faster, just because there's not really a whole lot of seams to worry about. I don't routinely pin my, when I put my borders on. I just go sew and enjoy the moment. So let's enjoy that moment together. Okay, everybody, it's finally finished. Behind me is the completed quilt top, and I'll show you guys some overview of how it turned out. I really love the border in this quilt. I think it really frames and gives your eye a place to rest, as well as just allows all of those colors to pop in this quilt. And I'm so happy with how the gradient turned out and uh, overall, I just think it was great. So thanks for sticking with me through this video. I know that it was a long one. As for where we go from here, so now that I have the quilt top done, I can start working on designing the quilting pattern. I have a really cool idea for the back of the quilt that I've got to start working on. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to accomplish it, so I do... I've got to I've got to do some more tinkering with the idea and also I've got to do some more sewing to get that backing pieced and I hope to be able to share that video with you guys in the next few months. I think I need to order some more fabric to really complete the whole back of the quilt um, and yeah I think it's going to be cool if I can do it. So I hope that you guys have enjoyed the video. As always, don't forget to like, subscribe, give me a thumbs up, comment down below. If you have questions, let me know. Otherwise, I hope you guys have a wonderful day and thanks for sticking with me through this quilt. Mm -hmm.